for the most part, the, what the history of the far right has tried to do is to just become part of the conversation. That is their goal, right? To just be treated like any other part of our political discourse. And if they have done that, then they have succeeded. Um, and that to me is, is the real challenge in doing it because they, you know, so someone like Walter Huss, for example, um, he thought that Jewish people and black people did not belong in America. Right, like you can't. That, that is not part of like a national conversation in a constitutional democracy. That's that is not a position where you should sit down and have a debate about that. Right, that is just a starting fundamental premise. Um, and so, and and so, once you sort of give up this idea that our political conversation should start from just a set of really basic, not necessarily controversial assumptions about who we are, or you know, the John Birch Society starts from an assumption that there's an international conspiracy probably of Jews, right, that runs the world and is seeking to turn the United States into a kind of, you know, a, a, a colony of slaves uh, run by the international banking elite. It's completely batshit crazy, right? So, so once you start having, you can't have like a rational argument with, with folks who, who, who just, their fundamental worldview is completely detached from the empirical reality of how the world is working. Um, so- there- they're cult members at this point, you know, and, and, you know, in the past, we've had conversations with people who have escaped uh, cults, whether we're talking about like, yeah, they were on a commune and Mm -hmm. secluded from everybody, or just being in one of those far right evangelical churches where they have to do some serious deprogramming. And, and so if my neighbor who's flying, you know, 10 flags, I'm not going to, I, I just know that I'm not going to be able to have a rational conversation with them. Right. It's so. it's years and years. Uh, yeah. It's not the kind of thing that, it, that you, they're all of a sudden they're going to go, gosh, you know, you're right. I'm going to stop going to the John Birch Society. Um, it's incredibly hard. And so that's why, I mean, I think of one of the key things we can do is talking to friends and people in our churches and neighbors who aren't <laughs> in that world, but who don't necessarily follow it and, and aren't particularly aware. And so, so just for an example, I had a couple people um, in my social circles who shared something with me from the Epic Times newspaper um, that was kind of vaccine denial stuff. And I was like, wait, I mean, and, and they they were like, hey, have you seen this? This, this well, I hadn't heard about this before. I was like, okay, you, do you know what the Epic Times is, right? And they didn't. And there's no reason why they should, right? There's no reason why any ordinary citizen who's not paying a ton of attention to politics should know about this. And, and so that's where, you know, and then once I told them, they were like, oh, oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, this sounded a little weird, but I didn't know anything about it. And then they just like threw it away, right? And so, so, so this is where like distinguishing between, you know, what is the kind of ballpark of, you know, disagreement and debate and argument in which, you know, there's evidence that can support what it is our different positions on something like how to deal with climate change, for example, right? There's a range of opinions, what, what, what the best solutions might be and how we should approach this. But the idea that like it doesn't exist is like, there's no conversation to be had there. 